Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. All right, welcome to, uh, this is going to be kind of a storyteller spotlight kind of vibe. I was very, very curious to look at some Akira as I've been working on Blaster Kid. Um, Akira keeps popping into my mind and I really wanted to look at the art and I haven't had time and, um, what a better way to do it than to discuss it with all of you and look at it. So quick updates. I want to talk, uh, talk about a few things. It'll just take a minute. So, uh, um, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? Oh, okay. Patreon for people that haven't checked out my Patreon for the last year or two years, it's been $1 to get full access to it. So I, I had told everyone, Hey, this is the last month that I'm going to have the dollar tier. It's going to go. I was going to originally bump it up to $3. And what I thought I would do is I'm just going to take it to two. The reason being, and that's all full access. There's hundreds and hundreds of videos. And also now when you're going to sign up this month, um, you'll actually get a master list, which, um, has the title of the, um, the video, the um the link to it and also um i think the hashtags are, are connected to it so that'll really help people um be able to find stuff but uh past that i mean patreon has been really really good for me but it's a lot of work and i've been devoting tons and tons of time to it and um financially it's just it's like we i have to focus on blaster kid so i have to make it where doing patreon makes sense in terms of time that I put into it because really all it is is me trying to enable all the people that are there to understand art better and to draw their art better whether that means that you just want to be an Instagram artist or you want to be a storyteller you want to be a colorist whatever it is we look at everything we rip it apart um, there's really creative dialogue about it and um, it's just a great place to learn. I mean, honestly, there's probably nothing exactly like it online. So check it out, and it really helps me. Over the next, the this next month is crucial. I have to make money. I haven't had work in a month, um, par partially because I'm trying to exit um, taking inking work. But um, you know, I mentioned that I'm going to do a live stream or maybe one a week where I actually try to sell some original art. Things like that are going to really help me get to the point where we can launch the Blaster Kid campaign. I know people are really excited about it, but I have to be able to live. I don't have a savings where I can just like float for a couple of months and not make any money. Bills are due, things are due. So, so everyone's going to need to pitch in to get me to the point where I can launch it, but everything is going really good. I will say that and I'm not I'm not blowing smoke up your asses with this. Dude, this book is going to fucking rock telling you it's incredible what's going on behind the scenes so all right um let's get to akira and enjoy some katsuhiro otomo one of my favorite favorite artists he's a top fiver for me easily when i run down the list in my mind of of things that that really have impacted me in probably very profound ways and ways that i don't even understand otomo's work is kind of that for me um it's just one of those things. There's really nothing like it. Um, I, yeah, it's really, really difficult to explain. But all right, let's go into full screen mode. This is actually colored by Steve Olaf. I'm nearly sure. Uh, and um, I can share some stories about that as we move along. But anyway, we're going to look at a little bit of um, issue one just because it's such an iconic issue. And then I skip to issue 14. So the pages will come up out of order. Uh, but it's fine. We're really just going to look at each piece as its own thing. And we can talk about it. This is a very, very nice thing. It's very intimidating. Um, this big black sort of orb over the destruction and the lightning and stuff like that. It's a really, really nice symbolic piece. And, uh, you know, it gets your imagination cranking. What's fascinating, too, is that he chose to do... It's like you almost feel like moments before it was a very normal day. And then this thing happened or... or um, the event happened and it's sort of controlling this because it's you know it's not like the sky is all doom and gloom too it's an in, a very interesting choice i think um all right so let's close this and this is from issue one nearly sure yeah i was i was curious it's funny he he's doing the thing where they're standing on the panel border we talked about this in um the it was the arthur adams video i did and I, was it for youtube or patreon 
I can't remember, but uh, yeah, that's an interesting thing. I don't think I'm I'm the type of artist that would pull this off. I think it would look weird in my work to have this. Um, but uh, if you have a more cartoony style, this actually used sparingly is a very, very interesting storytelling um, idea, which is having people stand on the panel border. It's very, very trippy. This is a very, very straight up and down perspective too. This building is turned a little bit. If you notice like a, I'm not sure what color my pen is on, right? Is it red? No, it's not. Let me let me get a full screen up for one second. I'll grab a red pointer. I'm on a mouse. I, I always warn people so they don't think that I like I'm am crazy or something. All right, and then brush. If you look at this building, it is actually tilted just a little bit. It's not as straight up and down as or, let me I'm gonna do this one more time. I put it as a pencil tool so we can see it more. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's interesting. And and those are like little things like that I always find interesting because the risk that we run when we use two-point perspective and we have everything going parallel, I think that's what you call it, right? Or is this, this is a parallel line and then this is horizon vertical. When your vertical lines are going straight up and down, um, it can look stiff. It, it runs the risk of looking stiff, but I find it fascinating. And I don't know if this was just an accident, but that line is a little bit turned. And this is too, which I, I would assume isn't an accident. It's a nice touch and it does actually add a little bit of character to the piece. It's a very subtle thing, but look, subtle shit is what adds up in your art and makes it better. It's those little decisions that you make that make it cooler. You know, this is a great shot. I love that he put the camera down so low. We're gonna learn a lot from this video. We is in me, and then I'm gonna spill it over onto you. So put on put on a rain slicker. <laughs> um, all right, Look, he's not happy. I actually like that color. It's kind of a, a creepy uh, lighting on his face, but it looks good. I've been doing a really great series of videos for Patreon right now where we're looking at the wizard storytelling book. It's really long. We're, we're almost 90 pages into it or 95 pages into it. Oh, that's cool. I don't even remember this page. Oh, so what I was going to say is um, years ago, people know this now, but so Steve Olaf colored this full, full like people hadn't cherry picked it he was selling at one point all the color guides there are tons of them online for this book and they were they were not that expensive at first a couple of years later when he made it more public um the prices went up quite a bit they were doubled and tripled the the amount that he was asking when i had seen it but I just didn't have the extra cash at the time. I've always been I've always been kind of living by the skin of my teeth doing comics as an inker, even though I've worked on some big gigs. Unless the original art is really valuable, um, you generally just kind of get by. Um, so uh, yeah, I didn't have the extra money for it, but it was it was incredible. And I remember looking through, and I kind of created a folder of like the wish list pieces where you're like, oh man, I would love to have that. But yeah, so he would print these out on some sort of art paper and uh, hand color them, and uh, man, they were cool. So if you're lucky enough to own one, I have a friend that owns a few, um, but they're still cool. He still does sell them, but they've been picked over for the last probably ten years, so you would maybe have better luck getting like a nice nice page off of a um like an auction site but they'll be expensive now more expensive this is really cool so this is trippy i'm trying to figure out is this fire or what is the red on this is this like this is all the parts of the city that have been destroyed neo tokyo city 38 years after world war three yeah 2030 ad that's funny interesting no comment. No, just kidding. <laughs> uh, that's really trippy. I'm tripping out on something. You guys probably know what I mean, but it's it's like uh, when you write when you write a book and then you're like, um, you know, you see similarities and things. You're like, wow, that's really weird. So then you and I was going to talk about that in this video. So it's actually it's a good transition. Is the one of the reasons that I'm pulling out Akira and looking at it myself is that as I'm drawing, I'm finding myself channeling the work, and yet it wasn't something that I expected. It's weird too, is I've been seeing Mark Silvestri popping up more and more in my drawings, like the character drawings and stuff like that, and that was unexpected too because I I have never really felt like I could ever capture any sort of the spirit of Mark's art, and yet. 
I'm starting to see similarities, but it's just sort of happening. It's an interesting thing. But when you start to see it happen, I mean, there's this point where you go, well, should I cross reference this and kind of see like, what, what am I doing? What did they do? But yeah, there was something, something was leaning me towards just checking this stuff out. I, again, I think a lot of his storytelling, the Tomos I'm talking about now is a little more straight up and down. Uh, at times, I mean, this page isn't a good example of it, but uh, I, I think I probably would use a little bit more extreme camera angles at times. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's like there's a few other influences and inspirations that I have that I think will will start to seep out more. This is really cool. But yeah, Tomo is the man. Man, that's so cool. Oh, this is nice. I mean, again, this is just two-point perspective. He just turned the camera. But, I mean, if you really look, these lines are still really going straight up and down. But this is a very effective tool. I did a review very, very early on when I had started Patreon for a guy who was really just kind of learning to draw or, or wasn't, like, you know, wasn't super advanced. And um, I told him, I said, look, I go... I don't want to change the way that you draw. I just want to help you be able to take the skills that you have now and make them more interesting. And this is a great example of it where it's like you can take a pretty simple shot and just by tilting the ground plane like that instead of straight across, it's infinitely more interesting and it's still just as easy to draw. Like you don't need to have three-point perspective down you don't need to be layering stuff in very complex ways there, there's a little bit of that going on but uh yeah i mean you can if you can start to key your eye in on things like this then other stuff will be a bit easier to draw this is actually curving around do you see, oops sorry but you see this is curving more but it's still a simple perspective he just instead of um having it so literal like going to a point like that he just curved curved the lines but they're still all going to a vanishing point somewhere over here it's just a little more curved I, I, a couple of the pages that I'm doing have really really tricky perspective on it and it's like I've already kind of in my mind just gone like figure it out one piece at a time it's you know it's like it's not a sandwich you're going to eat in one bite it's like you know you start at one end and you work your way through it <laughs> but they're really cool shots if i do it well it'll be a very very fun scene for people to like check out this is great <laughs> hey, look how tiny he is and his head is really big that's actually very very funny this is these are great poses too man what a he does the best explosions i think his the way that he draws explosions in art is so fucking cool I love how it bubbles under and it's got it's smoky fiery and feels almost liquid in a way it's a really really good combination of all that and then he's great at all this uh sort of debris and tech this is a really really great pose i love the light hitting the foot right here and just a little touch right there is really good this is great too <laughs> That's really funny. And this was an interesting thing, too, that I was... I mean, it's like I'm pointing out something that's very, very obvious. But one thing that I always thought was cool about Akira was it's like the world that they lived in was quite a bit more, um, quote-unquote, realistic. And the characters were more simplistic. But what it did is it always gave your eye an opportunity to relax when you're looking at the art. You didn't feel like you were being beat over the head by... Um, super detailed scenes and super detailed characters. So, although, you know, if you just drew like this, people might think it's very simple, but you think of someone like um, Alex Toth or, or there's comic book artists that actually draw that simple um, and, and even have simple backgrounds too. So you can get away with it, but it's... it's um, well now with with self-publishing being more of an option for people i think that that your style will be supported more but i mean uh i used the example in a video because i saw an interview with darwin cook and he was talking about even his style was considered it was pigeonholed basically it's it's just the way that it goes but he was the retro guy so although companies would give him work it was always sort of a special event like you know they perceived his art as oh he draws really cool kids and they're kind of cartoony so it's like we kind of need a book that's really a project for that 
it wouldn't have been as easy for him to just be thrown on a Batman book. Like, they couldn't just do that. It had to be like, oh, it's Batman in the 40s or, or you know, that kind of thing. So sometimes if you have a very offbeat style, you'll get kind of pigeonholed is, is that. But again, with, with publishing your own book, you're just creating a fan base. And then the, the hope is that the fan base will support your work because, uh, you know. This is a great colored piece. I like this a lot, and this is really nice too. Oh, okay, no, don't save those. Okay, we'll move through some of these a little quicker. This is nice, I like this. Oh yeah, this is such a great scene. Isn't that nice? That little moment right there is so good. This shadow across here is beautiful. I like that they're like illuminated because they're around the corner. This attention to detail right here is fantastic. This is beautiful. And then the light barely hitting them. And it's interesting that it's a little bit of a different color. Like the warm light is hitting him, but this is cool. And then this is way more desaturated. <clears throat> it's very fascinating. Muy fascinating, no. <laughs> that is a very, very nice drawing. Man, it's so good. I was watching High Score last night on Netflix. I, I was feeling stressed out and a little overwhelmed from the crowdfunding process of setting everything up and I needed to have a little bit of a chill night just to sort of settle down so it's exciting but it's stressful because it's you know I mean I still have to figure out the tiers and money and it's like it's just stuff that you don't normally contend with um you know what I mean like like what like how much does it cost to print a comic book how much is a trading card what what's the tier where a chromium cover becomes like some a possibility I think what I what I've seen people do too, and I think it's an exciting way to do it, is you roll out new tiers and perks as the thing goes along. So it's like we'll unveil things as we hit different numbers, and I think that makes it exciting too. Is the unknown and how what you buy will get stacked on with more stuff. But also, this is my first crowdfunded book. I can't overshoot it, meaning. Um, uh, you know, I have to be realistic. And the most important thing is to get you as a very, very nice comic book, a couple of neat little um, extras, and make sure that it's on time and looking sharp. Then Blaster Kid Book 2, we can get more fancified. This is so good, man. Yeah, it's really cool. It's funny because this almost looks like Star Wars in a weird way, but that looks more like a jet plane, but it is kind of funny. He might have tweaked it just for like lawsuit things, but it, it looks like the Death Star a little bit. Although the this is quite low, but it looks like a jet. I like the little TV here too. It's a nice touch. Yeah, the um for for my patrons, man, that is fucking awesome too. <laughs> that is a great panel. Wow. Um, for my patrons, look at all the things that we've studied from the last like month on the storytelling and layout and stuff like that how much of this is getting incorporated into these pages because it's it's now you have some information to play with you know you can look at this stuff and you're you're a more educated viewer really really important this is great this is nice too do you see how he tucked her foot it actually is going beneath the panel that's another move that you can make that's a weird tangent do you see his toe is hitting actual the border it could be the scan of this page though i would be curious what the actual bleed is but yeah you sometimes want to watch this where something hits right on the edge of something like that but um this is kind of more common where you have the foot go down a little bit where it's just underneath it such nice pages this is such a great shot he moves the camera around more than i thought it's it's really 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 cool this is great man i'm glad i'm doing this <laughs> this is cool bar scenes bar scenes can be tough he kept it fairly simple but it looks good but yeah wins enough wins enough detail in the bar you know what's the level of importance for the room itself i like this too this is nice really really pretty colors right here this is nice too really great choice of i like that purple looks good and then this burgundy is real nice 
Do 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 do. All right, let's move through that. Uh, actually, I wanted to point out this. This looks really good. I like the lighting right here. You see what he did with the color? He put that little extra shadow right there. It's a nice touch. This is great too. And this actually too, from very very simple color, that is easy on the eyes. This is great. I like that he knocked this guy back or well he's he's in the foreground but it's interesting you know you would almost think that you would go brighter with the foreground but because the light source is kind of coming from here although this guy's getting hit by light somewhere over here it looks like but uh yeah it was a neat call to make this guy sort of pushed back that's cool too okay we can move that oh that's cool great great shot abandon hope all ye who enter Looks like Kilroy was here, right? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's a really, really cool shot, too. Damn, this fucking guy is so good. He really is a master. Hey, that's cool. What a great shot, too. Wow. Those are tough to draw right there. That'll separate the men, the men from the boys or uh, girls from the women. That's really nice, too. Man, that is so freaking cool. <laughs> I can't believe I get to draw my own comic. Thanks to all of you. It's insane. I can't believe that my dream is finally coming true. It's so crazy. And it looks so good. Oh my god, it looks so good. When I hold that comic in my hand, I'm going to have to pinch myself. This is really nice. It was funny too is i forgot i'm losing track of the days because i've been so busy but i think i was partially aware yesterday was monday but i happened to go on youtube around 6 30 my time and um in my notifications i, I was watching something else but uh, on the side i could see that david finch was streaming live so i was like oh I'll click on it and and it was crazy like i swear every time i click on it someone is always bringing me up and, and i'm flattered by it it's i'm not like it, it's not me like patting myself on the back but someone was talking about blaster kid in the comments section <laughs> i was like oh shit it embarrasses me though honestly it makes me uncomfortable and i feel like kind of um self-conscious about it and i like i had to duck out i couldn't take it i didn't want to hear i didn't want to hear them read the comment because it was a super chat like a five dollar super chat so i appreciate whoever super chatted david for five dollars about blaster kid that was actually really funny but um, yeah, like I said, I would really, really love to have David do a variant cover for it. But again, that's another thing where I don't know where I can afford that. I don't know what David's rate is. I don't know like what's, you know what I mean? I have to talk to people that have done crowdfunded books. There's no way around it to understand how you reimburse people properly and don't go broke. Because you know what I mean? You can't. You can't pay all, like, well, you know what I'm saying? Like, you can't hire David Finch or, or someone at that level and then, and, and, uh, you know, screw up. I always love this sequence. It's very, very different, but really cool. Okay. This is nice. It really, it's quite simple, but it still looks really good. This is nice. No. This kid's so creepy. More of that really cool smoke. Yeah, it just it feels like it's like very juicy smoke. Like you can really feel like fuel being sort of moving through it and it really billowing up. I, oops, uh, it's really something to take note of because there's a lot of subtleties that he puts in the smoke that really actually do make it look quite, quite, um, incredible. Mr. Otomo, I will apologize in advance for trying to do smoke in fu fuming fuel as you have done, master. <laughs> What do we, we stand on the shoulders of giants, right? Like each generation. This is so good. Dude, that is so, that is such a cool little panel. It's so creepy. Do you imagine driving down the road, like you're on your motorcycle and you see this thing? Oh, is this, is this the old man kid? Yeah, it is. This, you know what? I will say though, that this 
for whatever reason, doesn't feel like this kid. Uh, this drawing misses it just the tiniest bit for me. I don't know what it is, but there's something just slightly off model. I, I think it's his hair. His hair needs a little more floof because this kid's got very, like, you see his hair is like, um, it f almost looks like it would be very brittle and kind of more floofed up. But when I see this, this looks like a kid that's younger and kind of in a more healthier state. It's weird. It's a subtle difference, but this kid looks healthier to me than this kid. So... It confused me, and that's the problem. If if you're the reader and you look at something and it throws you, that's sort of like the, that's the highest level of storytelling that we're trying to hit is that that you don't confuse the reader. Past that, Atomo is a master of this, so it's it's a minor criticism, but just something to you know understand. This is great. Follow me. But yeah, I mean, and there's always, there's a wiggle. This is great. It's so good. Um, oh, that's really neat, too. Um, yeah, there's wiggle room with all this. You know what I mean? A lot of them, I kind of joke and call it like it's not the crime of the century. This is beautiful, too. And you can really see, I mean, this is, these are probably scanned off of the comics. So it's, it's, there's pixelization and also you're almost getting a little bit of the texture of the paper read in this. So these aren't like the most immaculate scans, um, but uh, they're still very nice. I have the black and white phone books and then I have nearly all of the, um, what are they, Epic? What's the company that published them? I have one right here. Epic. Yeah, Epic. So I... Of the 38 issues, I probably have like 32. There's a few that I'm missing, um, but I have a pretty decent Akira collection. I also have the Akira Club and then both of the Kaba books, which if you're a fan of Atomo, look through my channel. Look for Kaba, K-A-B-A. -A. Um, you'll enjoy that. I'm nearly sure I've done the Akira Club book. And then I also think I have another like making of Akira book or something. I'm looking around my office right now. I don't think, do I have Akira Club in here right now? I don't think Akira Club is in here right now, but I have both of the Kaba books. Is Akira Club in here? I'm surprised. I guess not. Someone had asked about an artist that did models that was a Japanese artist. It's Nirasawa. I answered you, so hopefully you saw it. But yeah, it's... Uh, I think it's Yoshi Nirasawa. I can see one of his books over there. You want to get Nira Works if you can get it. It's a really good book good stuff i always love this sequence too this is really neat i don't know what it is but there's something about this is like once they pass this all bets are off like it's a new world i like that kind of stuff i've talked about it with the, the concept of westerns where it's like if you got out of town in the old west and got you know close to the mountains you were sort of free because people it was too dangerous to go through the mountains to follow you just that core idea of of that that nothing is connected past a point and for me this barrier is that point once they get past this the reality of the world that they lived in has gone to the wayside and it's a whole new adventure now i don't know if symbolically atomo was doing it but this is what i'm talking about this i'm getting goosebumps actually looking at this because I I'm so passionate about storytelling and comics, but uh, and I'm not being funny. I'm dead serious. Uh, this is a very important scene in the book. It really is. Once you go past this, or I guess uh, do we read it this way? Because this looks like this is where the almost like the things are popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think they're coming this way, and then this is out. <clears throat> but you see all this. I mean. They did it in Walking Dead, you know, there were scenes like this in Walking Dead, where it was like, you knew once you got past a certain point, you were really, anything could happen, the potential was there for, for real trouble, this is a gorgeous shot, um, so yeah, if this video is getting you hyped, good, <laughs> uh, so this is from issue 14, now we're in a different comic, so, um, it, it uh, were a little bit further into the story and there was some interesting stuff in these pages so I thought it would be good I just opened a batch of them wanted some variety you know what I mean like uh, this is nice nope All right. oh, this is cool man that's awesome 
stuff like this is so cool in comics because it's it's um he's really establishing something here you know as as the reader and as is the person enjoying the story i see this shot i'm very very curious of what's inside here you know i want to see more i want to i want to cruise around this area i, I sometimes will describe it as like a video game where it's like you know they reveal like sort of the next area that you're going to go through and you're either immediately excited or you're immediately like going like oh shit this is going to be hard but it creates it stirs an emotion in you and uh good comic books do this. this is a great shot too it's like the unknown you know we've got this and then this is really really good it's interesting are they okay they're inside oh, okay i guess maybe they show up and then they get inside and then they're locking it and this is outside it was a little difficult for me to tell at first but yeah this is inside because you can see the stairs here that's good shit Oh, man. I don't know why. Seeing this, it reminded me of the Ghost Rider comic book. <laughs> uh, this is cool. Uh, really, really good. Uh, ooh. You know, what's funny is the, uh, uh, seeing that word balloon made me think of it, too. But it's like, I also, I mean, I'm going to need to get a letterer. I, I suppose I could letter it myself, but I actually want decent lettering if possible. Meaning that, like, not just, like, the Clip Studio sort of generic lettering. Um, I'd mentioned before that Richard Starkings had offered to um, make a custom font for me based on my handwriting. And I think the deal was is that, that he could sell it on his site after it's done. Hopefully, he would still be down with that. Because that would be very, very cool. But I don't know if that's still on the table. That was like about two years ago he had mentioned that. But I would push it. I have very nice handwriting when I, when I try. <laughs> Sometimes I don't try. This is great. Really, really cool little shot. You, and it's funny too there's like a familiarity with this like we like you can kind of picture like if you were downstairs in like a hotel and you know this is like part of the lobby and you could go that way down that hallway but there's the next hallway that there's rooms down here but also an elevator it's very very nicely done this is great too oh yes it's not an elevator it's just a like a meeting room or something that's cool in high score last night, they went to Richard Galleon's house. Is that his name? Something like that. That billionaire video game Ultima guy. He had one of these staircases in his house, spiral ones. I had a friend when I was growing up. He had one in his house. It was pretty incredible. He was the first, it's funny too, because it ties in with video games. He had an Apple computer when we were kids, which was a big, big deal back then. His family was pretty wealthy. It was interesting. They were like the Cosbys without the drugging of people. No, <laughs> but his dad was a doctor. His mom was a lawyer and they were a black family and they were super wealthy. They had a beautiful home, tennis court, swimming pool. And he was one of my best friends growing up. We had so much fun. Um, but yeah, he had a computer that was huge. It's interesting how that all tied together. But yeah, they had one of those staircases in their house. Even as a kid, it was a little funky going down it. As an adult, I would be nervous. I would eat shit on it. This is really cool. Yep, good, good stuff. da na 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 all right, that is a great, great shot. Good stuff. I like that too. This is really nice. At times, you know, like on a page like this, I don't know why it could just be the coloring. It reminds me a tiny bit of Michael Golden. Like the maybe it's the vehicles and just it's pro probably the content a little bit and that it's really, really well drawn. But yeah, it does have some little like a touch of a Michael Golden thing. Man, that's crazy. It 
if this is cement, I can't imagine that a boat... I would think that the boat would just fall apart. I don't know if a boat could actually cr cracks this thick of cement that would support tanks and stuff. I think this thing would be toast. But it's kind of the artistic liberty. But yeah, I think <laughs> the boat might break up a little bit of the front, but I think this is about where the boat would stop. I'm not sure it would go in this far. But who knows? This looks maybe like it could be a different thing. Depends, too, how thick this is. If this is just a few feet and then there's space underneath, which could be the case, then maybe it could break. These are the thoughts that goes that go through your head when you have to draw this shit. Yeah, it's probably like yeah, it's see, it's not that thick, so the boat could probably go through it more. Man, it's crazy. Oh, look at that. That's cool. Bada 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 bada. Oh man, that's good. And you can see here, he avoided the idea of going straight up and down and gave himself a little bit of a three-point perspective. It's quite subtle. Well, it's not super subtle, but I mean, you know. I level is right about. I guess I level is just there, yeah. Whoop. Nah, Matt. Got a vanishing point way the fuck up here. That's cool shit. This is really nice too, man. And if you really look, I mean, there's not like a ton of detail, you know? I mean, it's like he didn't draw the tank tread. It's a little bit of a suggestion of it here. He didn't draw much of the undercarriage. Uh, this is pretty light detail in terms of like any sort of like real cuts and stuff. This is nice. This is all cool. And this is nice too. And then the, ca the characters just look great. It's really, really cool. It's a shame that it's a little pixely pixelated oh, us is great too really really cool shot and it's turned a little bit he's got a little bit of a tilt on it which makes it a little more exciting do you see so just that slight shift you know big difference this is great i love how he actually has the ship it's like coming around and then turning away from us a little bit so you're getting a little bit of the bottom plane you see this is why I, all the people that I'm teaching, especially if they have trouble drawing anything in space, I just tell them, I say, look, I go, get the rectangle down. We can put all this shit on it, but if you can't draw rectangles in space, you're fucked from the beginning, you know? It's really easy to put cylinders on this, because you can just create more rectangles and fit them in there. But yeah, if you can't, if you can't find your rectangle, then you're kind of screwed. He's like, you're screwed. Find the rectangle. <laughs> and it will help you draw characters and everything. Hands, feet, the whole nine yards. The rectangle is your... In my opinion, the rectangle is the most important shape ever. Ever! <laughs> you laugh, but even, even wheels. You put like a tweaked rectangle you're good to go you better be able to figure out your wheels in perspective it's like um it's kind of like a kung fu thing you know like when you can take the pebble of rice out of my hand or whatever it was you'll be ready that one simple task will open the door for everything <laughs> i'm walking on the rice paper <laughs> this is really cool Man, that's a wild design. I, this is really, really interesting right here. That shape. I guess it's support. This is really cool, too. Fascinating. A little protector. That's oh, really, really cool. This is great. Do you see your rectangles in here? really kind of squeal it back. I 
and then you just keep subdividing it, you know? It's like kind of the center. I, I actually um, would highly, highly recommend to people Scott Robertson. He's got a gum road too. If you just Google Scott Robertson gum road, I actually got a motorcycle. I don't have to draw motorcycles in Blaster Kid, but a motorcycle is a fairly complex thing to do. So I would recommend his motorcycle drawing one. I, it's it's on his gum road. I think it was five bucks or nine bucks, but I figured I've it, I've learned so much from Scott Robertson. The fact that I spent nine dollars on it or whatever it was, it was worth it. And and I would rather have someone that's such a great educator have that cash. So all right, have a great day. I love you all. Enjoy the video. I hope you enjoy the video. Please, please, please support me any way you can throughout the next month or probably like six weeks. It is crucial to me being able to fire off the blaster kid campaign as fast as possible because basically what it is is you know it's like i have to have everything ready to to fire it off and then that first month you know you don't have access to the funds so it's almost like i have to live almost two months with no money so i have to be able to generate money and not take inking work that's the thing is sure i could take inking work but then i can't work on blaster kid because i don't control that schedule so we don't want me inking if we can help it no inking. <laughs> Only inking Blaster Kid. All right. I love you all. Have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon. And uh, check out the description box. You can find an early version of the pre-launch page. But I will the, the pre-launch page within probably two weeks will look way cooler. And, uh, you know, stay tuned because I'll keep updating it. All right. Thank you. Bye.